started. Um, I first wanted to thank, um, on behalf of the communications committee, thank you for all your hard work in this process. Um, you guys are doing a lot of great things for our community, so we thank you for that. Um, we're going to start by getting a group picture, so if the task force members can come up on stage. Um, the photographer from the uh, News Tribune is going to take a group photo of all of us. This is the time frame we've used. The boards have approved this. And the red arrow, if you can find it, has slowly moved more to the right. And that's right where we are right now, where the committees are going to meet right there. That's where we are. And the next step is a public survey, which we'll get to later on. But that's where we are right now. The context of this is it's all started uh, with the high schools looking at career academies. This is what they looked at from the state of Minnesota. They used this to help them determine what it would look like on the range. Many of you were involved in this in August. This is what the group recommended would work here on the range. They took the six from the multiple areas from the state of Minnesota, and then they narrowed it to the three. So those are the three that if this happens here, these three academies, these are the three academies we're going to do. And then, there's another slide, I'm not going to spend very much time on this one, but these are the subgroups, the career fields, clusters, and pathways within each one of those major groups. Almost all occupations in the state of Minnesota are there. The only ones that may not be there might be ones that haven't been invented yet and some of our kids will probably be performing those jobs. So the context is we've been working on this for, boy, this is well over a year and a half since this whole thing started. So we've, we've got to this far. I counted them up. We've had 
about 80 community meetings with Elvis Gilbert, Virginia, on some level or another, to put that in context on the range, I am not aware of any other school district or school districts on the range that have had school boards meet or teachers or committee people meet with the others even one time. Hasn't even happened one time, and we have met 80 times. And so here we are, ready to go into the, the good stuff, so let's hear what the committees are up to, and let's go to transportation. And I just want to give you a little update of where we're at. And we had about four meetings, and we've looked at, as you, um, if you look at the points up there, when we looked at some of the routes, um, how our districts are running for our employees, um, you know, how many walkers we're going to have, where the school um, you know, how many, uh, or what grade, what grades are going to be in the plan, um, and the athletics of the site, the transporting to the communities, and we do believe, though, the transportation should be the driving force behind this decision, because we can make it work. I mean, it's just a matter of doing the homework and putting the time in, but we can definitely make it work. Um, next question. I just wanted to tell you again, I did this last time, and um, our costs up here, you can see up on the right, it's kind of similar up there, but as you go down, you can see that the Eva Gilbert cost is over double what Virginia's is, and there's a lot of reasons why that is. You know, on the left hand side there, as you read those, of course, we have less students, that doesn't help. And we also do our transport back and forth from Elk Gilbert, which causes, of course, extra fuel and everything else. Um, we also contract with Shoebot, the transportation, and that's for our extracurricular activities, for our sporting goods and stuff, and that's Monday through Friday. So there's a lot of expense there. And like I said, all of our EG employees here are full-time maintenance people, they're bus drivers and plumbers and mechanics and custodians. And of course our, our fleet is a little older. So when you wrap all that up, that's why I think you get the number up here. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's other reasons too, but these are the bullet points you came up with. Okay, these are the kind of maps. What you're looking at right there is basically the combine between the Abbott Gilbert and Virginia by the addresses of the students of where we're actually going. Like it's in an act both together. Then on the left there you got the Virginia and then you got it on the right. And it also shows you where the students are. There's another one for the two together. That's a little harder to see, but you can just kind of see the little dots. I hope you can see that. We do go quite a ways. So I think that uh, in the combined busing, it would be a big safety there. So I, like I said, I hope you can see that. But... And this is uh, the bottom, darker color. That's the Ella Gilbert district. Our boundaries and the blue is the Virginia. So you can kind of see it is quite a big area, and all the little dots, and there are kids where we're going to get. And if it's in the green area that's outside, that's like the open enrollment. So we do cover quite an area. I think that's a nice slide to see what where we actually are and what we actually do. Here's 
Hi, I'm Bob Boss, I'm the Transportation Director in Virginia. Um, wanted to show you a little bit about what, what, yes, wanted to show you a little bit about what the, uh, the routes look like. In Virginia, we, we on the right hand side is our city route, but on the left hand side is our, our uh, open enrollment routes. We tend to stretch we tend to stretch a lot farther north um, than Emlith does, and um, and, and, and farther west. Um, we only have one bus that actually goes uh, towards the um, Biwabic area, and we really don't get too far past Southern Emlith. We, we get maybe five miles past the Southern Emlith up towards the Great Lake. Um, and this is the Emlith map. They, they tend to go down much farther south and, and more uh, to the east than Virginia. Whatever you look at, we've, we've kind of stayed in that, in that triangle area. Everybody is really, is really very, it, it, the distance from the schools that are currently being used, really there isn't much of a difference. Um, actually, the Virginia, the Virginia buses would be driving a little bit more than anybody else. But uh, the distances are, are pretty much the same if we're staying in that triangle. In conclusion, um, there, there are some cost savings because we do overlap partially on some of our routes. Um, there's going to be some cost increases because we both have a group of kids that walk to school now in 7 to 12 that wouldn't be. So we're going to have to pick them up on the buses. Um, you know, but some of that has to do with some of them are 11th and 12th graders, some of them drive, some parents still bring them to school. So it, it's not going to be, you know, it's going to impact it partially. Um, the existing transportation buildings, I know Evelyn's got some older buildings. Ours was built in 74, but buses are getting bigger over the years. So we used to park, in our buildings, we used to park them in day and we can't do that anymore. So we've had to kick four, four outside. So we do have some buses outside now that we really would like to get inside, but there's nothing we can do about it. Um, one thing that we, we determined that as much of the sports activities that we can get on campus, the, the better off we're gonna be. Um, busing to, to sports facilities is, it should, it's gonna be a nightmare that I, I, I truly believe so. The more that we can keep athletics on the campus, on a single campus, that would be great. Um, but like Mike said earlier, transportation—I don't believe—should be your guiding factor in whether you move forward on this project or not. We'll work it out some way, um, uh, you know, through combining and, and cutting routes and and picking up kids on each side. So, um, you know, don't let that be the deciding factor. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. 
some strategy moving forward. So really letters to the editor, video testimonials, um, continued communications with the papers, and the numerous um, invite and engage area businesses. I've said it before, businesses are um, super important to this process and the project. Uh, so we really want to develop those partnerships and work to gain that support from them. So we have a lot of work cut out for us. We're waiting for more detailed plans to really get moving on getting that information out to everybody. Um, so that's where we are at as a communication committee. Any other questions? Do you have a Facebook page? We do. The other one, Gilbert School Collaboration page is out there. Any other questions?
So by simply putting the seventh and eighth grade and sharing the space in between, which is your cafeterias and your your uh, fitness models and your uh, athletic models and things like that, um, would all be shared between the students. There's a five million dollars. So it's being unanimously supported originally a six to twelve school model. Right? We really, really liked the idea. It came up. Why don't we put six to twelve to create a six to eighth grade middle school and a ninth to twelve high school? Uh, we still support that. We still fully think that's a great idea. But we understand that there's some, some committees. The finance committee gave us some possibilities where that could hinder the money. And if we have to, we're fully on board and we fully support a seven to twelve model, which was the original start structure, uh, so that we can maintain the financing that's been put together. Right? Uh, there's all the statutes to help you explain why we have to do that. There's all kinds of details and rules as to why we need to keep it 7 to 12 to help us with the financing. A many to the facility. Uh, again, keeping in mind, if we're going to do this, we want to do it right, set up for the future, allow for us to build and expand. Uh, it includes a 1500 seat auditorium, an 8 lane pool, a dining pool, additional space for the industrial tech and facts and music, uh, making sure we have enough space, large enough space to accommodate. Uh, this interest in that. Okay. Uh, full practice fields on the site um, and on the campus. 2,500 seat stadiums, attractor, fields, lighting, everything coming to be on campus as well. Outdoor field options were selected. So we went through the process of what do we want for outdoor fields, coming up with what you see there on the screen. Uh, Third field stadiums of track, three purpose all fields, two baseball fields and eight tennis courts, uh, and a four field complex giving us a total of $9,844,000. These numbers are going to add up, let's see as we go along. Okay. Elementary plans. Then our discussion led through all this process that, hey, we're doing this all this great stuff at 7 through 12. Uh, we need to address the elementary. A lot of our elementary are <coughs> part of the existing structures and buildings. Uh, so we went through looking at enrollment projections and how we're going to make sure we accommodate for the size of this building, the size of our facility, to make sure it accommodates the collaboration between the field and Virginia, and anything that might happen in the future. We then came to include parking learning center as far as the owner is concerned. Relatively new, new additions, new sizing. No changes were needed is our recommendation to that to accommodate uh, pre-K through second grade in the Virginia area. The Virginia 3 through 6 plan would then use the existing building of the Virginia High School, but we uh, use this the areas you see that are highlighted in yellow. It's basically the newest hammocks on the Virginia building, the first and second floors, and the newest gym there, and then some of the remodeling would involve the new kitchen cafeteria and a better, more fluid connection between them. So you tiered the upgrades to the other two sections torn down? That the we'll get to that. Okay, yeah, gotcha. we'll let you know what the plan is. <laughs> Yeah. But this is our recommendation on how we can accommodate Virginia 3 through 6. The Evel Gilbert plan was a little more complicated as we looked at the fact that there's two different locations for them. Uh, Pre-K through 6, if we were to combine Pre-K through 6 at Franklin Elementary, a budget of about 17 million, 17 and a half million or so, would allow us to take that and generate a Pre-K through 6 with a remodel to make that work out there. If we just added a single session or class group in Gilbert as pre-K through six, we also looked at that, keeping them in both Evelyn and Gilbert. Um, through all the data and the work through on that, we found out that we have a cost of about seven and a half, seven point eight million dollars in order to do that, and then we run into a few other challenges. Okay. The question came out, do we go with two pre-K through six schools or one for the Evelyn Gilbert area? Uh, the Gilbert would likely only be at one section with class sizes of 15 to 22 kids, but the two schools, keeping them in two separate buildings instead of coming to one, would add an additional operating and maintenance cost of about $300,000 a year and considerable more cost in reconstructing and remodeling both buildings. <coughs> then, what do we do with the existing buildings? We realized we need to have a plan for the existing buildings. We did not want to go into this process and eventually hopefully get to where we want to go and not have a plan in place for the districts and what do you do with the old buildings. Uh, current plan is to put the buildings on the market to be sold for possible reuse and redevelopment 
with a two-year after election date concept. If they didn't sell, we would deconstruct. We have in the budget numbers we're going to see tonight the money involved in deconstructing those buildings if for some reason we can't do something with them in about two years. That's our recommendation. All right. So we included in the numbers you'll see at the final end of my slides of seven and a half million dollars to do something with those extra buildings. That then becomes green space and it's something to do with the city and the school to decide what happens to that space. Uh, for those of you familiar with Virginia, there's no green space around the Virginia school. So the committee plan for the school board consideration is going to be this. We're recommending that we have a new 9 through 12 school building, kind of based on the Alexandria Academy Miles Field, but we're looking at 680 students in the 9 through 12, a 176,000 square foot building with a total cost of about 62.9 million. Again, these are estimates, these are just rough numbers, off of models, off of formulas, off of all kinds of data uh, from pre-existing facilities out there. The Alexander High School had 1,400 students. There's some data there to show you that. Their cost was approximately 89 million. Then we're going to go from that 9 through 12. We built up from the 9 through 12 academy model and we started adding in 7th and 8th. So 9 through 12, looking at 176,000 square foot building as a recommendation. These are high numbers, so we want to make sure we have 20 square footage to then try to segment out that box and decide the classrooms and space for things like that. Uh, so we got 52 million, about 10 million uh, earmarked for land in the site itself. Okay. Then we add on the seventh to eighth grade school. We want to put seventh and eighth graders over there as well, so that adds up. We bring the total now to about 84 million dollars, uh, just putting in the space. The bubble diagrams are not blueprints. The bubble diagrams are just to show you and illustrate what I'm talking about as we add these new components. Then we added a big auditorium. We have a growing population, a growing interest in the arts. So we were actually adding a 1,500 seat performing arts studio. Uh, this is more than just an auditorium. We have everything necessary for the performing arts. All right. Bringing us up to a total right now of 95 million. We then added an eight lane pool with a diving well, bringing us up to 102 million. And then additional space to make sure we have plenty of room for the text, facts, music, and all the other extracurricular stuff that was brought up in our facilities. Uh, this was a, a topic of a conversation from Alexandria, one of the things they did not do well enough in the first place. And now they're figuring out how to add on. Uh, so, $107 million right there now. Okay. So, the grand picture for our recommendation for school board comes out to a 9 through 12 school, uh, adding 7th and 8th to that campus. Uh, we would not have to worry about the shared spaces, so we could reduce some of that cost. So the red number is taking stuff out of there. Adding a 1500 seat auditorium performing arts concept. Add eight lane pool, text, facts, and music with additional space to make sure there's plenty of room for all of that. Stadiums and athletic fields. Edwards Billboard Pre K through 5. Elementary remodel, that's in this budget as well, to remodel those up to speed. Adding the Virginia 3 through 5 model. Deconstruction. We got that in there for the Virginia Edwards and Gilbert, all the unused buildings, assuming nothing happens with them over time. And then the possibility there might have to be capitalized interest in bond issues there as well. I'm sure we'll get more details from the Finance Committee on a lot of that. Uh, that brings our total to $166.7 million. Uh, if we were to add the option of a one-section school in Gilbert, we need to add $7.8 million to this number to keep those two buildings separate. Uh, with an additional $300,000 a year in operating maintenance costs, uh, which is just highlighted there to say that bottom number if we were to break apart like we mentioned earlier. Prepare to turn to with Alexandria. Uh, when we look at it, because Alexandria came up so much with this whole process, people may have notes on this. We know that they had about, if we were to uh, take care of uh, estimated dollars and assumptions through uh, inflation through the years, we're looking at about $89 million for the Alexandria model down there. But you can see with the X's what the Alexandria model included in that price. Uh, so why are we looking at 160 plus million instead of even nine million dollars? Almost dope. Uh, well, we are adding in seventh and eighth grade. We will need to buy the land utilities. Alexandria did not have to do that. Um, we're looking at a considerably larger auditorium to accommodate the needs that we feel that our school would need. 
from 600 seats to 1,500. We also want performing arts in there, so it's not just an auditorium. Um, stadiums and fields they had as well, but they did not put a pool in. They didn't have to do any elementary improvements, which we think is critical in this process. Uh, they also had significant private donations, and they didn't put anything in for deconstruction. We want to find a for that. Operational maintenance comparison. All in all, without getting in all the numbers, and you guys can read that on your own, we're looking at a potential savings by putting a new building and new structures with the new 7 through 8 and 9 through 12 and remodeling the schools. We're looking at anywhere from 1 to $1.3 million a year in savings in what we're spending on O&M operational maintenance expenses in these old buildings right now. Uh, in figuring that out, things were considered. Utilities by a cost per square foot, staff to maintain the sites and grounds, staff to clean and maintain the facilities, the amount of land, acreage for the students, uh, were all things that were considered in the 7th and 12th month. Right. So in conclusion, remembering that the mission was for the kids in the first place, this is what we're all about, this is what we're trying to figure out and how we can create the best educational model for the students on the Iron Range. We're going to conclude that we need a solid plan. We have a solid plan for a new 7 through 12, which is going to save an awful lot of dollars by connecting the two under one campus. We're recommending the existing buildings that are not suitable for the academy style high school, so let's look at the new building structure. Established amenities, this is our one part. We enjoy establishing everything we want in this school to address both our communities and our school's needs and desires. Uh, plan for the elementary schools. We have a plan for the elementary schools. We're recommending them go through that. We're going to put a plan there. We think that should be a critical part of this process. Plan for using any of the buildings. We want a plan in place and we're recommending uh, what happens with the existing buildings when we're not using them. Uh, that we can save significant dollars in operations and maintenance by coming together, uh, emphasizing that these facilities we found out that we can save a lot of money and put that money into good use and the education of our kids. If that look over and we need to come together under the one roof from the campus. And then we have a $161 million current price tag, but that can and may adapt uh, as we look at the amenities. That's the auditoriums and the fields and the pools and the uh, extra stuff like that. Okay? We dream big, we want to shoot big, we want to get what we possibly can, but if necessary, there is room in this to start working with things around. Any questions on any of that? When we get the facilities, it's a lot of information. I just, I think I was clear, but when you had the yellow and the red in the existing school, that's the part you're going to use. That's just an idea. An idea, right? Yes. That's the idea. Yeah. That's yeah, the yellow and red dots you'll see on the pictures and stuff. Those are ideas of how we can take the existing space and make it work for what we need for that particular age group. You know, whether it's pre-K through six or three through six. Yeah. We took a lot of diagrams and a lot of ideas and maybe this part of the building and that part of the building uh, and came up with what we recommend to be the best. Any other questions? Again, a lot of preliminaries, a lot of estimates, um, but a really good exciting picture for what the academy model and the building structure should look like for us. All right, thanks.
a little bit about the site committee. Um, the majority of the people that are on the site committee were also on the facilities committee. It became very clear if we were progressing through the facilities committee meetings that we weren't going to be able to hammer out and start looking at site options within that committee and still get everything else that we had to do. So all the majority of the people that are on the site committee for the last three weeks have been meeting two times a week. Facilities meeting and then turning around the next day or the following day and doing a site committee meeting. So, this, uh, all people that have participated in this uh, it's been a uh, pleasure work with everybody on the whole committee and um, a lot of people dedicated a lot of time and put this stuff together. And again, through all of our conversations that we see on every one of our slides, whenever we start going out in the weeds, it always comes back to what is the best answer for the kids and, and focusing on that. So,
Uh, obviously, the size, you've got to have the acreage. Uh, and and we, we talked about having some of a neutral location. Uh, another challenge we have is we've got to try to appease three communities. Uh, three communities that have, that have an awful lot of pride in their community. So we, we figured, you know, well, we've got to try to find some place that's as neutral as, 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 as can be. Um, I don't know if there is a place that's completely neutral, uh, but we, we kind of honed in on the triangle in between the, uh, we call it the triangle, in between the three communities, and we thought that was about as neutral as you could get. Uh, we wanted to have utilities. Um, if you don't have utilities run, there already there's an additional five, six million dollars uh, that's going to cost you up front. Um, so we spent, that was kind of a criteria that we look for in our sites. Um, again, it's got to be usable. Uh, you, know, you can't have uh, sheer cliffs. The topography is extremely important. You can't have, you know, steep grades because um, all of a sudden, if you want to flatten things out, it's an, it's an added cost, burning and fill, and those types of things. And, and then the last one is, is the mineral rights. And, and again, most places don't to, to fight with that, but, but we do. And it's, it's, it's a good thing because uh, uh, there is some, some money out there because of uh, uh, the minerals we have. But it is also uh, a detriment as well. So when we came together uh, on our first night, uh, we had, if you look up here, uh, in green, are the majority of the sites numbered in green um, were looked at previously, uh, 2014 and in the past. So, so that you'll see all those numbers in this. And we went through and we looked at all, all of these sites and uh, at our first meeting it kind of talked about is something even you know, viable or not. Um, and a lot of the things are no longer viable. A lot of them in the middle of the city, we know that if there's not enough acreage there, you have to deal with them in the main. It, it's just not really an option in a lot of the uh, locations that are in the city. Um, so this is all dealing with our first meeting. Then, uh, as we're uh, closing our first meeting, we wanted to also discuss, okay, so this is what we've looked at in the past. What haven't we thought about? What are some other options? So. Honestly, we're, we're looking at the maps just like you're looking at the maps, and we're looking, we know what there's open area in certain locations. And so the red circles are after our first meeting. We went to the, uh, we asked our consultants to try to find us, get some more information on, on those areas. And so that's what the red circles are in this uh, slide. And the, the, the green areas, the green areas, you know, the 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 11, uh, the main issue with most of them just sheer size. Uh, I think the, the can just to give you a, a, a little indication, I think the campus in Virginia right now where they've got what is it, three through twelve? Is it three acres? Does that sound right? Six acres, thank you. For six acres, so we've got uh, three through twelve grade on, 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 on six acres. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, and that was the case with most of those green numbers, is that this was a sheer size. Uh, there was one here, number five. Um, it just happens to be, it, it's owned by the city of Virginia, but it's right next to the railroad tracks. So uh, I don't think that, that we kind of, kind of crossed that one off our list. So there, there were a number of reasons for each of these sites that they kind of got X'd off, uh, whether it be a neutral location, whether it be sheer size, you know, whatever it might be. And we kind of came back to this triangular, triangular area you know, in between the three communities, and that's kind of where we focused a lot of our time and a lot of our effort. So just like Gary mentioned, but we, at our second meeting, um, we came together and we, as, as a group, our priority is size, neutral location. We keep coming back to what is the most neutral, what is the thing that we can get <coughs> these communities to um, support. Um, and that's coming back to this central location. If you look at the school district, or we pulled together school districts, we looked at the population of where all those students are at that you've seen earlier in some of the earlier trial. And as neutral as we can get is, is in that central location. Um, and so that's why when we're going to go to the next slide, that's where we're focusing on those sites. Now, everyone in these communities knows there's probably a good reason why there's not a lot built there. <laughs> and that's dealing with some of the topography and the mineral rights issues. That, that we're going to have to address and, and we can figure out what we know as a group, we can figure it out. Uh, the students in all of the districts are, are they're focused, they're concentrated in the 
municipalities are concentrated in the city. So if you look at the city of Virginia, that's the big pack of students. In um, Evelyn and then Gilbert, that's where the, the, the majority of the students are. But we also are, have students that are, point of diet, but we also have students that are up in Britain, the northern portion. We also have students that are down in the southern portion. We've got a lot of students around Eden Lake. We've got this, these two districts are spread out. And the other thing that you notice with these maps, you're going to see blue and yellow on the very northern portion of, of this map. You're going to see blue and yellow on the very southern portion of this map. Our students are integrating themselves with it. We do it or not. Um, that's something that we came back. And it was very, uh, obviously this is data that we have not, not seen on a map because we pulled together the demographics of both community school. Um, and then once we put these on a map, I'm a map person, so I really like to see these diagrams and pull this, this information apart. You see where Gary's pointing, that green area, that's in that triangle, and that's where we're looking. And, and as a group, we kind of feel that that's the major location, that's the sweet spot. That's where we can move forward and get some buy-in. One of our recommendations from our committee moving forward is uh, we're going we're to talk about four sites that as a group we think are uh, we need to investigate further and move forward with. Uh, but in order to deal with transportation uh, and, 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 and those issues, and Focusing on Highway 53 and focusing it, uh, focusing it either on putting a location on Highway 53 or 135. Those are the easiest access we can access the build the school along either of those highways. Um, it cuts down on transportation costs. We're not driving through a city or not doing sort of those things. So that's why we have that recommendation. Try and if we can to make it on one of the highways and hopefully maybe make it visible and make it and using that as building a big beautiful school. To be able to facility that people can see and that daring range and that our community can all be proud of. Um, those are all things that the site committee and the facilities committee have talked about. After a second meeting, uh, we identified the, the triangle. So the triangle of land um, uh, is this triangle. And in this triangle, these are all the sites that we identified as potential sites. Then in our third meeting, we came together and we got some more information. Like Gary said, we were fortunate enough to have Tim from the DNR uh, come and talk to us about each of these sites, what mineral rights are there, what is the potential, where is the mine going to go, where is their blasting zone, um, and all sort of all that information. We got more top topographical maps, we got wetland maps. So we, we looked at all the different things, and we know there's issues, there's potential issues with every site that we're looking at. This was a wetland map that we had. So we're, deal we're looking at all the sites. What are the wetland issues? There's, there's, there's different variations of uh, wetland, whether it's um, considered wetland at the state level or whether it's uh, the ground is just wet and you know we've got to deal with that. So there's, there's some of those in each site. This came from the DNR talking about the iron formation. So basically all we're up and it's really kind of hard to tell. Here is uh, works. You've got Evelyn. Uh, down on the lower left, and you've got Virginia up in the top right, and Gilbert's over um, a little bit up down there. And then you can see Midway right next to where it says United Tack Night Thunderbird Pit. That's where Midway is. So the location that we're looking at is in that circle. Well, you've got iron all around them. Uh, we got mines all around us. And something that we have to deal with in other areas don't really have to deal with. I mean, it's not just a beautiful farmland that's up there that somebody's going to donate to us, like Alexander. There is no flat land in the iron range. It really is. It takes an art. We, we learned how to make it work, and we can continue to make it work, and we can do it. So DNR came in and talked to us about, so those, this to me is really interesting. So those were active, in, uh, those were my formations, are the previous one. But these are active leases. These active leases are dealing with other minerals. So not necessarily the iron, but there's other minerals that are in these locations. And these are current leases, which means they're keeping them for reasons. So some of our sites, and even some of our recommended sites, we're going to say the districts need to investigate further to find out if they potentially are viable or not. Uh, if, they, if they dig down and they find gold in some of these spots, we're, we're not building a school there. And we know that. But some of these spots might be perfect if they dig down and say, you know what? There could have been, but there isn't. So uh, that's why some of these, uh, in the next slide, we're going to see what we ended up coming up with. So we went through, like I said, we looked at lots of data, a lot of maps, to 
is great to be out of the day. <laughs> um, but we determined, and we had, as a group, so after going through all that information, we took a vote, and everybody had three dots, and we kind of identified what are the locations that we think are viable that we want to recommend and move forward uh, with to the board. And there isn't one spot that we know is a home run. There's a lot of spots that we need more information on. Ultimately, we're trying to find the best spot uh, that's going to meet our needs. So um, at this point, the site committee is recommending to the boards to consider the four spots. Uh, this A down here, that's Progress Park. It's owned by Evelyn Gilbert. Or sorry, it's owned by Evelyn, that, that, uh, that property. B um, is Progress, formerly Progress Park. It's owned by, it's currently owned by Virginia. Um, and C is the old Midway School location. Uh, and then some additional property that Virginia has owned. Um, and F is owned by a single individual. Um, and we know that all of these sites um, do present some issues. Um, and, but at this point, those are our recommended sites. And we feel that uh, the districts, as they move forward with this, investigate further, um, get more information on what the site development costs and potential is going to be um, in these sites. And then we have to make a decision at that point. We didn't ask the DNR to, I guess, kind of rank or give us their opinion on these different sites, but they did, and we were very appreciative of that. They did say um, they recommended A, B, and C as their top three. Um, they wanted to stay away from D because of the blasting, which is directly across Highway 53. Um, e, uh, the county. St. Louis County was going to build there a few years ago. They decided not to. Uh, awful lot of wetlands there. So we figured that if the county's not going to build there, then why the heck would we want to build there? Uh, the concern, oh, I'm sorry, with G, there's not enough space. And again, it, it, with the G site, it did come back also to the neutral location. Uh, that topic did come up. Uh, the concern with F, um, and it's on the list because it is a single owner, um, it is a nice, relatively rectangular shape, I'm not a math guy, but uh, uh, it's close to a rectangle, work with me, work with me. Uh, there are a significant number of mineral rights underneath, so that's a concern there. There are slight mineral issues with, uh, with, with uh, C here, uh, but again, the two A and B were the two strongest recommendations from, from the people of the DNR. If you look back here, mineral rights, F is completely covered and it tailed up back to G. Uh, the group could really kind of tell like, well, F is, is a viable option because it, it looks like by all other, when we're looking at some of the top graphics, tough, other, other things, uh, F is, is a potential because of uh, it looks like the building. It's clarified that it's flatter than some of the other areas. But if there's gold there, no school there. Um, in conclusion, Site committee, we started and we looked at 15 sites. Uh, we looked at MDE guidelines. What, are, what is MDE telling us we need for size? How do we get there? Um, what are the school district, district boundaries? Where are the students? Where do they reside? What can we make? What, what can we find that's neutral? Um, we looked to find sites that were large enough, things that will allow us to grow in the future and aren't going to confine us. We looked at trying to find a center where the center where the student population is for both communities or for all three communities, sorry, and um, how or what the access to utilities. The nice thing is that utilities, ones, as we learn more about all the properties, the, our concerns over utilities drop because there's utilities in all those locations. We can get gain access to utilities in all those locations. Um, we looked at lots of maps, detailed mapping, wetland maps, topographical maps, mine, uh, minerals, um, and land ownership. Who owns the land? What's the valuation of that land? And we come down to the four sites that we uh, are recommending to the boards to investigate further. We also know that our job's not done on the site today. I mean, we're just, we're just in the beginning stages. We, we still need to gather more information, or hopefully the districts can gather more information. So we know we're not done meeting uh, by any means, and uh, we're just excited to, to be a part of the process and hopefully keep it moving. Questions? It's a lot, it was quick, I know. All right, now the finance team is going to tell us how we're going to do it.
Are we the microphone or just?
things that was mentioned earlier was the concept of a sixth grade model incorporated in a sixth through eighth component and a ninth to twelfth component. Facilities mentioned that finance have some reservations about the sixth grade inclusion here. And we'd like to explain why that is. Uh, the original way we looked at it again would include a K-5 primary component, an elementary component, the 6th to 8th middle or junior high component, and the 9th to 12th cabinets. Uh, John, would you please uh, jump in now and let's talk about what is meant by secondary schools and why it's important in this conversation. Yep, so thanks, Tony. Um, and I can speak to a process that happened a week ago and in our last meeting and can express just how important this topic was looking at um, what the, the cooperative uh, facility means specifically the statute um, to the idea of cooperating up here. Um, I mean, this was created back in 2014 with the idea of cooperation, shared facilities, and this, you know, this is the this is the path, right? This is the this is the approach that we that is most advantageous, includes the perks that um, that we think are, are uh, appropriate. You'll see the you know the word secondary in quotes up there, and that's very very important. Um, what what was presented to us, and, and we discussed at length last Wednesday, was you know K through five, right? Each district. Um, funding an 8 through 5 concept, and then really, you know, a 6 through 12 joint effort using um, some vehicles. Again, the word secondary becomes very important because as you can see, secondary does not contemplate uh, 6th grade. That's uh, a very important thing to think about here as we proceed that 6th um, grade doesn't isn't included in this, this facility that was uh, created in 2014, again, with many perks um, to cooperative government. So. so what would the impact of that be? Uh, very briefly put, sorry, I'll give the aim of what direction you want in a minute here, which is slightly on the way still. Yeah, come on. Current law, as it sits now, no matter what happens, the, the elementary components stay separate. Each district will manage the elementary component as we move forward in regards to the model. 7 through 12, this is the secondary component. This is what is eligible for financial assistance to the IRR's cooperative Iron Range School Cooperation Fund. Sixth grade is out of limbo. It doesn't fit the current definition of secondary, but there are financing models available where each district would individually participate financially, but what would need to be completed is an additional joint powers agreement, different from regular joint powers agreements that are up and common and in, 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 in some cases presently existing. This can be done, but it's much more complicated than if, we, if sixth grade remains in the primary side, not in my K6. Think, think about it, you know, if um, sixth grade remains in the, the K through six session, right? Um, we potentially have two different, two districts um, offering debt that are um, considering both the K through six facilities um, as well as, again, the, the, the cooperative agreement 7 through 12. If 6 is contemplated in the new facility, 6 through 12, you've got a third entity issuing debt, and that brings in what we believe to be some complications, including potentially a second ballot question. Now, there may be two ballot questions, even in a scenario where sixth grade stays and, and goes to a K through six um, arrangement, right? That, that, that may be the case. But again, now you can introduce um, a, third, um, a, a third entity, if you will, that, by the way, 
doesn't qualify for several of the perks that we just talked about a bit ago. Again, back to the 2014 um, 123A.482 statute. And those are important perks when we think about this, um, this these, these concepts. So I'm glad you asked any thought about all this very frankly. It became a little concerned that if the, the, the initiative has to go to a vote regardless, right? So the, the simplest way of looking at it is a single question vote. A single question referendum. If six is included, this may complicate to become a second ballot question. And the difficulty in educating the entire voting public we find is a reality enough to consider recommending that sixth grade does not become part of this initial this initial proposal, this initial plan, okay? And if I could say also, um, at, at the meeting, um, we took a straw poll of everybody in the room, and it was unanimous that we pursued the, the route of um, K through six, um, and, uh, and seven through 12. Again, we think it's a clear, There's a timing issue 
that we should highlight, which brings in the concept of capitalized interest. So if you look at the timeline that we are contemplating right now, we're looking at um, issuing bonds in the middle of next year, right? Um, that's beyond the point in time where they voted for or can levy the, um, the, the, the uh, tax base. So, um, you know, we, we wouldn't be able to levy as we as you can see here until uh, early 2020, which means we really can't make an interest payment until 2020. What do you do? You add that interest payment that you owe to the actual principal amount of the bond, and it's effectively that, that interest payment is spread smooth some feature over the course of that time. So, so if you were to do the math at the, the level level, that four and a half percent of all that between five and six million a year. So we would capitalize six million into the bond amount to cover that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're using the um, you know the state aid formulas at their current levels, not assuming changes to those that equalization formula that math. That um, by the way, uh, you know. My 20 years in finance, you know, I, I um, felt somewhat confident in my abilities in, in finance. And then I joined this committee. <laughs> and I stood corrected. And I, I'm getting there, and we've got a lot of help uh, from Jeff and, and Greg and the committee. Uh, help me out. It's been, it's been, it's been terrific. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, that state aid equalization map is not one that uh, I grasped right away, it took me a couple of months, but we're assuming nothing changes there, as, and we are assuming some support, and, and, you know, and we'll talk a bit more about that, but um, you know, however we ultimately finance these proposals, we are assuming broad support in the actual funding. Yeah, as we mentioned, the project needs the IR support, and we expect that it will be coming, and it will be a matter of negotiation, a matter of persuasion, and a matter of what's best for the kids for the next several decades. So, now the good part. What's the outcome of all this? Floating bonds for $155 to $175 million for that 20-year period. Expecting from the construction of the project $5 to $7 million a year in state aid. Hoping for IRR participation for four to six million a year, leaving an annual tax impact on homeowners in the district between $150 to $275 a year, equal, or trying to be as equal in all the three communities as possible. Saying it another way, that's like 20, under $25 a month. Saying it another way, there's about 180 school days a year. That's around a dollar to dollar and a quarter of school day for that new facility or set of facilities that were presented earlier today. These numbers are based on a full value of $125,000. If your home's worth more, you're going to tax will be a little bit more. If your home's worth less, you're going to tax will be a little bit less. So if I could say one thing too, um, what's really unique we all know this, but it's going to be very important to, um, to tell this aspect of you know, what $150 to $275 a year is it's truly buying us um, relative to um, other districts. Again, you know, Tony led with the concept that this is being this is motivated, driven by an educational experience that we think is superior and it's really innovative and exciting. Um, many districts, that that dollar figure doesn't include IRRP support, and that that money buys a lot less than what this package potentially buys. It's, it's really really important to, to say that it's not necessarily an apples for apples, right? If you look at what a hundred dollar a year increase has meant to other other districts, I mean this is like metro districts, let's say. This is really really unique, and it's been impressed upon us in the committee as well how important that is and what these dollars are actually getting. It's, um, it's, it's quite impressive. I'll just say, globally look toward the 
financial stratification of the project. Sample idea here for the bonds combined contributions. Stated, we carry about 46%, that's the orange area. The IRRR would be about a third, 34%, and the levy, the tax, in the tax collection from local property owners, amounts to about one fifth of the project cost here. Uh, we believe that this is a very advantageous model, a very solid model, a very sufficient, it will maintain itself. And it will depend on the desire of our public to move us forward for the next 50, 70, 100 years for our kids now and the generations to come. That's all we have, but we are certainly open for any questions if anybody has any. Sean? When does the state calculate the um, net tax capacity that is used to establish the It's based on an average, I believe by directive, it's based on an average of the attendance in the districts on a day by day by day basis. And the calendar begins. They do an assessment of the total valuation that's, that's calculated. Much more tax impact for far less return for year by year by year until that infrastructure catches back up to new standards. Right, but the way up is an option. Um, I believe every committee that and task force that has been a part of this project, in spite of the do nothing option, does not recommend the do nothing option. <laughs>
there is a positive outcome in that piece from the school boards. It's only just begun at that, at that juncture. Before I, I finish up, excuse me, the other one. Before I finish up with, with what we've done so frequently, and just open it up for, for dialogue, open it up for statements. Uh, one thing that it was noted, uh, it was talked about, it was brought up. Everything you've done, every hour that you put in, and many of you have put in multiple, multiple hours in this piece. Not only just sitting in meetings like this, but things that you've done outside of the meetings. It's all been about this, right there. Because that's the whole piece of this. You can build new buildings, you can put them here, you can do whatever you want to, want to do, but the whole, the whole enchilada, so to speak, is right there. What makes sense for the kids? What works for them? Not where it works, how emotionally tied them into this, or where it may be located, what makes sense for the kids? And so hopefully, and I think in all cases, and I can speak specifically, I know for a fact for the facility group, and I, said, I would imagine everybody felt the same way, that's what was in the, in the forefront all along with every decision, every dialogue, every debate, every, every conflict, it always kind of came back to that piece. So hopefully, hopefully nothing and no one loses sight of that particular item right there. What's best for the kids? What's best for the kids in both communities? What makes sense? Can we, can we get it done? With that, open it up as we always do. Comments, thoughts, overwhelmed, tacos were great. <laughs> what, where are we at? What do you think? Anybody? Anybody? Have a comment, a thought. I mean, this really kind of closes the chapter on all this speech. A little bit emotional, right? Now. Uh, but this does. It kind of closes the chapter on this whole this whole piece that we've gone through now for quite some time. Especially for those of you who were at listening sessions way back in the spring. I mean, we've been at this for a long time. And I know Murray's really sick of seeing me at this juncture. He's really sick of pizza. That's why we had tacos tonight. Uh, but thoughts? We're going to miss you. What's that? We're going to miss you in December. Wow. <laughs>
know, say, well, why do we need this? Why, what's, what's such a big deal? And I think we have to be the stewards of it and the ambassadors for it. And it's something Troy said really stuck with me. He said, 100 years ago, our communities made the choice to fund the education and to build these schools for our students. And now it's our turn to do it again. I mean, it's important to tell the community that this isn't new. This is what communities have done for their kids for generations since schools have been, have been uh, organized. So I think it's important that people realize that this, is, this isn't just a short-term fix. This is the next chapter of our, of our Iron Range education. Everybody can hear it, I assume. OK. Anything else? Other thoughts? Go ahead over here. I'd just like to say I think this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And we need to push this as hard as we can. Because this opportunity won't come around five years from now, ten years from now. So let's go. Let's go after it. Thank you. Anything else? Can we? I mean, just talking about the like, there's I triple R B money out there. Like that's. I mean, obviously it's being put out there, but that's not like making assumptions or saying false information there. We can say that and say there's money available, all that. Okay. Did everybody? She's, she's wondering, can, can it be said that there are there is triple RV money out there? It's not an assumption. It, yes, you can say that. Okay. Yes. That's a simple answer. Yeah. Okay? That's That was her comment, so hopefully. Is it the, 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 like, maybe, you know, yeah. maybe, but. And whatever difference there is, Jeff Schultz will pick up the, the slack. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. Not a problem. Go ahead. Sorry. There's not triple RV money out there. was created in 2014 for these communities. Mm -hmm. It's there it's for these communities, it's for these kids, it's for all the people on the Iron, Iron Range to have the peace. But it is there, and that's yeah. something that we need to be saying. Because this project, this doesn't happen for these communities without that I triple R B money. That goes away, that diminishes that all. It doesn't happen, we all know that. That I triple R B money is there, we know it's there, that's one huge part of this project. It doesn't go forward without it. You know what? So it has to be an integral part of this piece. They have, we need them to step forward and support these communities, which is what it was there for. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to say, at the last question, the uh, finance committee said, I think that's a that super important thing to push, um, that if I'm gathering, if I understood it correctly, it will cost us like more not to do anything. Um, and so, in a sense, if we can get that message out there, I mean, then, dare I say, we're a little silly if we don't take, take this and go. You can say that very loudly. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I mean, that just really had an impact on me today. Not that I'm, I'm on a full board sort of from the get go, but to think about these communities, if we can say, look, look what we can get. And if we don't, you know, it just seems like a no-brainer to me, and I think if we communicate that properly, I think, you, a lot I think it's safe to say if you don't, someone else will. Yes. So, anything else? Can we get a copy of the, the finance committee's... Um, you know the script before I even get there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Any, but any other... I think I can that. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't forget. Uh, yes, the whole PowerPoint we have handouts in the back. The finance piece. What's that? Uh, Kevin's got them someplace. Um, the finance piece. There's a separate handout for that. I would ask the facility group not to take the checklist because there's not quite enough for everybody in the room. And you got it last week if you were at the meeting. Uh, so don't take the checklist. But the checklist. There was about the third or fourth slide up there that that talked about. Uh, that that uh, Chad talked about and had a little yellow line across the middle. That's back there that the facility committee had to uh, fill out. So facility committee, you know which one I'm talking about. Just don't take it. Uh, but there is the PowerPoint, this PowerPoint, as well as the finance piece. Any, any other, Noel? One last announcement. As we move into the next phase, just so you know, there is the Kent Combined School Board meeting coming up on Monday. They're going to be briefly summarizing this. Not all board members are here, many are here, and they're also going to talk about the RFP test request for the proposal process, and they're going to be talking with the individuals who are serving for a living, talking about what the questions might be, editing, going back and forth with them. So that would be a service call.
little while to work together. But it's been amazing. It's, it's something that I'm, uh, I'm proud of all of us to be able to put uh, First Solutions aside. And I, I guess I'm at the point now where this is real. This is extremely real. It's right there for us, and we just got to we just got to take it to, to the finish line. Thank you. Anything else? I guess I'll yeah, go ahead. I like the fact at the beginning. I'm sorry, the teacher that just spoke. I forgot what your name is. Gary. Gary. Um, I like that how at the beginning you said that you got into this because you were feeling like teaching was getting kind of stale. Um, you know, it was kind of the same old thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's like for our, the kids too, and I think that it's very important to that we re-energize both teaching and kids, and I think this is the way we're going to do it. Everybody here. Okay. Anything else? Okay, the gentleman in the back, you have the hand. Have a great Thanksgiving, Christmas. Thank you for everything.